In the same way the Tony Hawk franchise previously saw a shift in design, thanks to a greater emphasis on narrative, following Thug 2's jackass and destruction themes, it saw a shift once again, as these story beats and mini-task mission structure would shape the first game to hit 7th generation systems, American Wasteland. And just to jog your memory from two years ago, I'm really not a fan of that. I'm afraid to say that American Wasteland has definitely proven to be one of my more controversial episodes, with many people disagreeing with a lot of what I had to say. Which is totally fine, everyone's entitled to their own opinions, even me with my apparent wrong opinions, but if you don't mind, I'd just like to revisit this quickly and explore it a little before we jump into Skateland on the DS, just so that we're all on the same page. Tony Hawk's destruction boner really blew out of control in American Wasteland to a point that it hurt the game in my opinion. Though I do have to admit that my hate boner for the game hurt what I wish was a more balanced review on my part. While I will stand by a lot of my points, I feel I was a bit too harsh on the game overall. The story is fun with many standout moments of the entire series, it tried to implement new gameplay mechanics and side content, and while the open world wasn't actually an open world like we've seen since, it did lay the foundation for them. I just feel that many of its levels, while still fun, just don't compete with other locations we've seen before and after it, which is reinforced with the weak classic mode. But aside from that, it's mostly just a build-up of little things that hurt the game in the long run. Strangely unpolished presentation in certain areas, still doing tutorials halfway through the game to open up standard movesets, and some of the pointless side content. But at its core, it still maintains the fun skateboarding gameplay we all love, and I still find myself coming back to Wasteland even with my personal gripes. So that's why I'm going to upgrade my score from a 4 to a 5 out of 10. American Wasteland is an average game, definitely not perfect, but definitely still a game worth playing. Alright, well now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's drop in on the Nintendo DS with American Skateland. Released in 2005 alongside the console versions, it opens up immediately with Creator Skater. For all of the times we've seen this mode, I must start off with a negative. It's pretty underwhelming. There just aren't many options for anything. What is cool though is the return of Creator Deck and Creator Graphic, and taking advantage of the DS touchpad, we actually get to draw for real, which can lead to some great designs. For some reason, it does tend to jump around, which is a massive problem, but this could be the game, it could be my DS being old, I'm not entirely sure, but the feature itself is still really cool for making graphics to represent and tag throughout the game. Best of all though, we have access to custom sounds. Yes, you can actually record yourself and put it into the game. Yeah! Ah, oh, fuck. Holy shit, this is already a 10 on 10. The story begins with some cool comic-style cutscenes as Tony takes us straight from a competition victory to the streets of LA on a skate trip. Of course, right off the bus, we run into Mindy, who agrees to teach us the ropes as we start off in Hollywood. The game itself has some cool cell shaded graphics and high contrast colours giving it a very distinct style, but otherwise everything is pretty much as you'd expect. We move from location to location, all free flowing and much to my surprise, every area has been recreated very well. The layouts are all changed somewhat, with some added corridors and corners to help with loading all of this in, but every single landmark within each of these areas is still present. I'm kind of surprised to be honest. The DS is a system I'm not super familiar with, but it's holding its own here. 
Control is also incredibly accurate, with the addition of touch specials on the bottom screen for quick access to special moves. Of course, we can still input button combinations for more advanced maneuvers, but the ease of just pressing a single button to perform these tricks is a nice touch. Nice touch, uh, whatever. One notable absence, though, is the lack of any walking or off-board gameplay. Strap in, baby, because it's like classic Pro Skater. Which may seem like a step backwards at first, but in reality, you barely even notice it. Probably the biggest difference here would have to be the story, while it does still follow the same basic concept. American Skateland is an old school skate park that's incredibly run down, so we have to travel all over, impress pros, and convince them to contribute a new obstacle to the park. There is a money system for completing objectives, and we actually get to choose which pieces we want to add. That's awesome! This is what I felt like was missing from the skate park in the console version. Wouldn't it be so much better if we had a list of all the items we unlocked and got to place them around ourselves? So even though we're working on a much smaller scale here, I really like this. And because we're not running all over the place, absolutely ruining every level with mindless destruction, the base locations don't lose any of their fun obstacles and remain at their best. If there is one thing that lets this game down though, it's the missions themselves. They're all fine, don't get me wrong, but almost all of them are incredibly simple, brief, and aren't all that interesting. I don't think this is a case of veteran player syndrome either, because there are plenty of missions all across the franchise that I never get tired of after 20 years of playing them. There is nothing bad about any of them, but yeah, it's just standard stuff I'd have to say. Plus the inclusion of a big map showing you where everything is certainly doesn't help. It really strips away any fun you can have exploring the levels for yourself. So the game overall feels like a return to Pro Skater 4 actually, with its simple and quick mission structure, basic dialogue, and the lack of any walking. Also, Alcatraz is here. That might have something to do with it. Yeah, Alcatraz makes a rather strange appearance, given we're supposed to be based in LA. I get that we're still within California, but you don't just go through a tunnel and arrive at Alcatraz. Still, this is a classic level that I'm always happy to play. Once we complete all of our goals, we move on to the warehouse for the final pro challenges, skating all of the obstacles we've built along the way. And once we've completed all of those, the game is over, with the comic book selling out, earning us enough cash to purchase Skateland. It's a standard ending and story overall, that is basically the same thing from Wasteland, without any of the major storytelling moments or character beats. Classic mode is here as well, with pro skater goals across each of the levels, which does add some replay value and some much needed challenge as well. It's just a shame that that's it for Skateland. There are no unlockable levels or skaters, which really is pretty weak, coming off of the grand assortment of content found in Remix on PSP. Of course, it is a much stronger system, but I mean, even the Game Boy Advance games had secret content. Overall, I'd have to say though that this is a fun game and a great Tony Hawk game on the go. With no major issues, it's fine overall, if a little dull in the long run. American Skateland on DS gets 5 out of 10. I really wish there was more to say about it, but the less I have to say is probably a point to the quality of a game in its own right. But on that note, we're not finished yet. In fact, we're far from finished, because American Skateland also appeared on the Game Boy Advance. Both versions of this game were handled by Vicarious Visions, as always it seems. But, for all of their success with these ports, they also butchered Underground 2 on GBA. So, let's just pray that they've learned since then. Of course, we begin with Creator Skater and... 
this is the part where I apologise for calling Creator Skater underwhelming in the DS game. We don't get to create shit here! Then we kick off into a brief tutorial with the Birdman, and then quickly arrive in Hollywood where we meet Mindy. So, as you can see, very similar narrative going on here, working to elect pros to restore the warehouse. I must say, thank god skaters don't look like mangled Play-Doh people this time. All of the graphics have that same high contrast style we saw in the DS game, and the player has a nice outline too, in an effort to help them stand out amongst everything else here. A step back into the right direction for graphics, but of course, the GBA graces us with its audio experience once again. We do have a few licensed tracks mixed in there with what sounds like a few original tunes as well, and thankfully, none of it is too great. But my god. Trying to just play the game and do missions certainly is. The first area is so fucking big, and NPCs with objectives are spread so far apart that it takes forever to even find them. Then when you do, it's your typical quick mission format, and back to searching for the next thing to do. The Hollywood location seen across all versions of the games does feature some drastic layout changes, but still includes a lot of the more notable landmarks. But it's from here that we move into some new locations that are exclusive to this game, which is admittedly something I find really interesting, seeing new and strange Tony Hawk levels. The Beverly Hills area is based in a schoolyard, with one or two familiar set pieces you may remember from a much more beloved school course. But damn, it's a shame this place is fucking woeful to navigate, with a lot of vertical terrain and very limited ways of getting back to the top. And again, it's far too big. Then, after some more goals, we unlock the downtown area, which is also fucking massive! But then you realise that there aren't even any objectives to complete here. Well, until you find some items hidden in each level. Let me just explain that by the time I'd actually realised I needed to do this before any actual goals would become available, I'd already scanned this area up and down and found nothing. There are a whole bunch of Starbucks, Pershing Square monuments tucked away in the corner, and even La Brea Tar Pits is here, which actually makes for a cool skate spot, but good luck finding these tools that are required to get through the game, because they're not located anywhere close to any of the major landmarks. You just have to be lucky and stumble across them within each area. It took me 30 minutes to collect them all. That's the problem we've run into a lot with the entire franchise at this point. Are the tight controls still present? Yes. Is the presentation and soundtrack good? Yes. But it means nothing if the levels are 90% dead air and 10% fuck off. And it means nothing if the objectives within those levels are just bloody terrible, time-wasting, overly simple, or frustratingly tedious garbage. So, you do all of that and finally open up the downtown objectives, which is just more of the same, numb time-wasting. Then we move on to the van skate park, but of course, before we get any missions there, first we need to skate all over and find a bunch of nails, screws, nuts, and bolts. It's like a goddamn kick in the nuts and bolts, fuck me. Just give me some fun skating already, that's all I ask for. But the sheer brilliance in game design on this mission just really speaks to me. You go and look fucking everywhere. Again. Until you find a little stash of items. You pick them all up here, go to the next area and find some more, keep looking in the last place, and... You've missed one. Oh, but you didn't actually miss one because you already picked the fucking thing up, but for some fuck all reason, a second item spawns in the exact same spot as you already grabbed one the first time around after you left the area. 
It's just a mess, this game. Why is everything so poorly laid out? It's shit. Literal shit. With corn kernels in it. And the game even makes you pick it up. Isn't that just great? The Vans area is easily the best level in the game because it actually features skatable terrain. Figure that out. Across all of these massive locations with nothing in them, there are no combo lines. Nothing feels connected within the gameplay mechanics or even within the design of the areas themselves. It's like a bunch of random shit just plopped down into Creator Park with no rhyme or reason. Thank God we only need to deliver an item without bailing to enter San Francisco. Which, of course, is via the Golden Gate Bridge found in downtown LA. At least this area actually includes a few cool obstacles to work with, but still, none of it flows or feels natural to explore, and just as quick as you get here, you're already up to the final mission. To get Tony Alva's attention to help with the Skateland Warehouse, we need to hit some of his classic gaps. And that's it. That's all the information you're given. How is some fucking stupid child, or some dim-witted man-child, supposed to find any gaps across these huge levels? I actually had to break out a walkthrough just to be able to do this. Which there isn't any fucking walkthroughs, because who in their right mind would admit to playing this filth? Especially playing it long enough to become an expert and write a fucking walkthrough. It's only by chance I found some other people like me in forums who'd thankfully figured it out. Of course, the San Francisco gap is grinding the full length of the bridge. But not on the actual cool high wire grind, no, just the curb. Very special. In the Vans Park, all we have to do here is grind a ledge. Yeah. Which fucking ledge? Try finding the correct one on your own. Only by luck would you ever succeed. In downtown, it's these bright blue benches between the entrance to Vans and the school, which of course, you have to hit just perfectly or it doesn't work. Another reason why this is so easily missed. Thankfully, school actually makes some sense because what's one of the most memorable grind gaps from the school levels? The Roll Call Nightmare Rail. Here it is in Skateland. If this mission was based on Tony Hawk history, with some familiar gaps on historical landmarks within each area, it would actually be really fucking cool. But it's not! It's just stabbing in the dark until you finally hit your heart so you don't have to play this shit anymore. But the cherry on top, of course, is the final gap. You'd be right to assume it involves the Hollywood sign somehow, and given all the previous gaps have been grind related, obviously, we need to grind the Hollywood sign. Wrong. All you need to do here is just air gap over this terrain. Beautiful. With everything done, we go to visit the warehouse and see it all complete. It's not great, I'm gonna be honest. There are some extra pro missions to complete, but the story is already done, so I am too. If you hate yourself, then you can play classic goals across all of these levels, but be warned, they're weak as fuck. What an anti-climax. I just don't get it in the end. The Tony Hawk formula is so simple at its core, and yet despite delivering console quality games onto a weak portable system in the past, they just can't seem to do it anymore. So why does this version even exist? Skateland on DS is fine, but the fact that we've had better games on the GBA previously really says a lot to me. And it's just so disappointing to see it sink so low with this disaster. Aside from the presentation and control, this is a disgrace to American Wasteland and the Pro Skater series as a whole. There is just nothing here. 
no good level design, memorable objectives for all of the wrong reasons, having to play through the game just to unlock different coloured clothes for your skater, and absolutely zero enjoyment to any of it, without a single speck of replay value. American Skateland on Game Boy Advance gets 2 out of 10. It's abysmal. End of story. I've always claimed American Wasteland as the turning point for the entire series, because whether you're a fan or not, agree or disagree with what I have to say, there is no denying that many changes started to brew around this title. And I'm afraid to say that this is brutally reflected within the Skateland titles as well. We're at an incredibly prone point in time here, where it's starting to look like Tony's best handheld days are behind him. Or are they? Up next, we'll be taking a look at Downhill Jam. Not the console port we've seen previously, but the handheld originals that actually came first. So, let's just hope that translates into some kind of quality better than what we've seen today. But until tomorrow, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe and share. I'm Square Eye Jack and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching.